Uh, I've got a few other slides that kind of go through a, a visual representation of especially the, the inertia and the feed forward and what that does and how that works. So we went through the, the auto tune, we went through the encoder learn, we talked about how to do the inertia learn, but uh, you know, what do these, these learns actually do? Why do you want to do them? Do you need to do them? You know, which ones should you do for, for which application? We'll start out with the, um, the motor learn. Um, I know on induction machines, sometimes this isn't done. Uh, that is okay, uh, you don't have to, but uh, we always recommend doing it. Uh, again, it's going to result in better ride quality, uh, a lower current draw, quieter operation. So other than saving yourself a, a few minutes, uh, we always recommend doing the, the motor learn for induction machines. As far as permanent magnet machines go, um, it is required. If you don't do the motor learn, the motor will not turn at all. The data that was uh, measured during the auto tune will be used for the encoder learn. So we do need to do a, a motor learn with the correct motor data in order to have the, the correct encoder position. You know, what it's measuring, the motor inductance and the resistance, uh, and what it does with that is it, it creates an equivalent circuit model internal to the drive, uh, and that gets fed into the, the feedback loop uh, during closed loop operation. Uh, it does also measure, measure the, the dead time, which is going to be the switching time between the, the transistors. The SPI, the stationary pole identification, sometimes called the, the encoder learn. Uh, again, this is only done for uh, permanent magnets. You know, when, when we talked about the, the way the, the permanent magnet motor works uh, and why we need to, to do that, again, that's going to come down to how the rotor is magnetized. Uh, again, it is with uh, the permanent magnets because the drive needs to know where the rotor is in relation to the motor poles, the pole pairs. That's why we need to do the, the encoder learn. That way it can, uh, uh, what we call, electrically commutate the correct uh, stator magnetic field angle so that we have 90 degrees between the rotor and the stator for maximum torque output. The encoder synchronization, this uh, learn is optional. Uh, all it's going to do is, is determine the correct AB phasing for your encoder. That, that, it, that does help, it kind of takes an extra step out, but uh, again it can cause some confusion depending upon where you're uh, located in the hoistway. This section here, uh, I took this right from our, our manual. Um, when I talk about the, the AB swapped and the not inverted, and especially for, for permanent magnet motors here, this is where you, if you have to do another SPI, if you make this switch. Anytime you go from not inverted to AB swapped, another SPI needs to be done. Uh, again, this is what is taking the place of physically swapping the A and B channels on the encoder card. We're just doing it in, in the drive. Uh, but the encoder position will actually be different for this channel than it will be for this channel. So no matter which way we go, if you change that, we have to do another SPI. You can't change it and try to run. It's not going to work. Now, the other two channels, the inverted rotation and the AB swap and inverted rotation, are going to be the same as the two, these two. The only difference here is that it's changing the, the polarity or the direction. So if your motor runs, it runs with uh, low current, goes the right speed, but it goes the wrong direction. You command up, the car goes down. All you need to do is change the polarity. So if it runs fine on not inverted, all you would do is change it to inverted rotation. So that'll, that'll just change the, the direction at which you're running. And the same thing applies for the, the AB swap channel. Now obviously if you have an induction machine, you can go between uh, AB swapped and not inverted, no problem. Uh, feed forward torque control. Um, so we, we did talk about how to, how to do this, and um, I have a diagram that kind of shows what, what's actually going on. So <clears throat> again, if you're looking for a more responsive ride, uh, you've got some tight floor-to-floor -floor times uh, that you'd like to meet, this, uh, this is a good thing to do. What it ultimately is going to do is reduce the, the dependence on the feedback coming back from the motor encoder. What I'd like you to do is, is picture this diagram here without these two boxes up here. So just the proportional gain, the integral gain, 
um, and this, this filter coming back from the, the encoder here. So when you first um, go to run, you have this, this command speed right here, okay? It's gonna go through this, this filter. This filter is, is internal to the drive LD31. It's a, it's a drive filter. Um, but after it goes through this, it's gonna go uh, to, to the gains next. After the gains, it'll go out to a, another uh, output filter in the drive where it finally goes out to the command torque. Now, on your first speed command, there isn't going to be any error because we don't have any feedback coming back yet. So we send the first, we want to go 50 feet per minute. Okay, so that's being outputted here. So then we have our first set of feedback coming back from the encoder. Okay, so say we're only going 25, okay? Because you can't instantly just go up to, to 50 feet per minute. So we're going, we're starting at 25. Okay, so we've got an error of 25 feet per minute. All right, so that's where this uh, get, gets put into the, the feedback loop right here. This is a summation for error. Okay, so we've got an error of 25 feet per minute that's going to be fed into the PI uh, proportional and integral gain uh, loop here. So the drive says, okay, I've got an error of 25 feet per minute. How do I, what am I going to do? The higher your proportional gain, the higher your integral gain, is going to influence the, the rate of response to that error. If you've got a high proportional gain, it's going to try to compensate for that 25 uh, foot per minute error difference much faster than if you had a lower KP speed gain. The integral gain initially isn't going to have much effect because we don't have much long term error. Uh, we've only got one speed command at, at this point. Um, so again, you know, the integral gain is going to be responsible for that long term average. So this is going to start to, to play more of an effect uh, as the, the further on in the profile you move. So then we take that error and the drive tries to compensate for that. It's, it sends out uh, what it thinks it needs and then again it looks back for what it's getting. Maybe now it's only getting, um, we're at 45. So okay, so we took that error from 25, now we're going to 45. We only have a five foot per minute dif uh, difference. Again, that gets thrown back into this, this loop. That's where the integral gain starts to come in because now we've got a little bit more uh, time involved. That's going to help, you know, are you going to settle in fast or not? So this, this loop is, is happening constantly. Um, what, what I'm talking about here is, is happening on a, on a microsecond uh, level here. But um, this, is, this is happening constantly. So that's how it would work without feed forward active. Okay, you're strictly, you're relying all on the, the feedback coming back from the encoder. So as far as the error, your response to that error is only going to be as good as that feedback. Again, there's going to be some delays in that feedback because everything is not instant. So that's, um, that, that's how that plays into that. Now, the feed forward, how that works. <clears throat> when we learned the inertia, uh, it, it took the, the physics of the system and it, and it creates a, a, a torque value. So it says, okay, I know how much acceleration torque I need to get to, to contract speed, and it's gonna make a prediction. So because it knows how much torque it needs to get to, to contract speed, it, it knows at, at any given point in the profile approximately how much torque it needs based on that prediction. So what happens is, is when you first start out, it, are, it automatically knows. We're, we're not going to rely on the, the feedback coming back. So in the first example, you know, we had an error of 25 feet per minute. Okay, the only way we knew that we had that error was because we're relying on the feedback. But because we learned the inertia, we know the physics of the system, we can automatically feed how much torque we need uh, to the motor right away. Okay, we have this filter as well. Um, that's the, the, the torque command filter. What this is gonna do is it's gonna smooth out your torque, um, your output torque. So this is, is gonna be used, I'm gonna use this later on in the presentation as well, but ultimately it's the, it's the same picture. So don't, don't look at any of the, the text here because this is for the um, uh, reference splitting uh, parameter we have. So what I, want, what I want you to do is this green, that's going to be your output torque to the motor. 
okay? Um, as you can see, it's a step function. Depending upon the magnitude of these steps is going to dictate if you're going to feel it or not. If these steps are large enough, you're, you're going to feel that as a, as a bumping sensation. Now that torque command filter, LC42, what that's going to do is that's going to actually average over these steps, depending upon what time you set it to. Now Dan, I think you said what, 128? So 128 milliseconds, that seems to, to work really well. So what that does, um, I, I don't have a, a time scale on the x-axis here, but uh, for, for purposes of the display here, we'll say 120, 25 milliseconds is over two, two of these steps here. So what that, that filter will do is instead of looking at this, okay, new command, okay, new command, it just averages over these two. So we go from this step function to this smooth line here. Now this is only on the, the torque uh, that's going out to the, the motor. Um, the this, this same principle is applied to both the speed pattern coming in as well as the speed command going out to the motor. So I will use this, this later on. But as far as that, that, um, the torque filter, LC42, that's what's going on here. We're going from this step function of output torque to the smooth line because we're averaging over a, a set time. Now, obviously you might say, well, the, the longer time you average over, the, the smoother it's going to be, right? Uh, yes and no. Because remember, this is just a, a linear graph here. Your torque is going to change. It's not going to just be this, this constant step function. Your steps might get larger, they're going to change, they're going to get lower, um, depending upon where you are in the profile. If you average over too long of a period, um, you, you're going to what, introduce what's called latency into the, um, into the torque command. Basically, your torque command is changing too fast for what you're averaging over, and ultimately you're going to start to lose control, and you're, you're not really going to gain any benefits there. So. I hope this, this kind of helps explain the, the, that filter a little bit of what's going on. Uh, again, we're just filtering these, the, the torque command over a, a set amount of time so that these steps here are ultimately reduced to a, a smaller line. Does that, that help, Dan, kind of what's, what's going on? Yeah. A lot of times we make these adjustments and they seem to work and we're wondering, well, what, what did we actually do? So, Okay, so back to the, this block diagram here. So we talked about the filter. Um, it's, it's sending out a, a torque value already. So now, uh, coming back from, from the motor, instead of that, that initial 25 uh, foot per minute error that we had, now it's been reduced to, uh, f to 45 foot per minute. So we only have a five foot per minute uh, difference. So all because we knew the physics of the system, we automatically fed in um, what we thought a, a correct or proper torque command would be. Um, so ultimately, we, we reduced the, that amount of of influence that the encoder uh, feedback is, is going to have on the, the speed command. Uh, I'll give you a, a, an example here of uh, graphically what's going on with um, the speed command. So I, I just did this in our um, R&D lab at, at KEB. We have an elevator simulator. We're able to, to simulate uh, different amounts of load on both an induction and, and permanent magnet motor. So what you see here, the, the red is your command speed. The blue is the motor speed coming back from the encoder, and then uh, green is going to be motor torque, and then yellow is your motor current. Uh, this here is a completely detuned motor. So we've got low speed control gains, we've got no uh, feed forward torque control active at all. Um, it's just we did the motor learn, we, we ran it, and this is, this is what you would get here. Notice, um, one, we're, we're kind of going in and out uh, during the XL portion here, we got loose control. We've got a lot of overshoot here. We're lagging big time. Again, we're, we're undershooting, overshooting here. And then also, not only the, the feedback from the motor, but look at these um, torque bumps. So we've got a large torque bump here, here, and especially over here. These are things you're going to feel in, in the car. So now, to show the effects of, of what the feed forward torque control really does, we did the inertial learn on the simulator in the lab and that's all we did. We learned the inertia and it was automatically turned on, did the same run, and now this is what it looks like. So if we go back and forth here a little bit, as you can see, 
we, we tightened up the XL portion. We virtually eliminated all the overshoot, rolling over into contract speed here, as well as in the decel portion. But then also, if we look at the, the torque bumps, so we, you know, we went from this to this. This is what we like to see as far as torque goes. Uh, we don't like to see, see those big dips or big bumps coming back up. We like to see these, these 90 degree or roughly you know, 90 degree changes here and here. You know, these are things that um, we're not going to feel or we're going to feel less in, in the car. So again, this, this was just shown to, it's a little bit of an exaggeration because we started out with, with everything detuned. Um, but this just kind of goes to show you know, what activating the, the feed forward uh, torque control can, can do for ride quality. Does anybody have any questions on, on this here?